we're going to look at the mathematical relationship between volume and temperature. And there's an equation that we're going to write that is true as long as the pressure is constant. And we talked about this on a previous slide, and it makes sense if we think about it. If we have a gas that's in a container like this, of course I drew a square, I probably should have drawn a balloon, but if we have one, two, three, four, five moles of a gas in a container, if we heat up the gas, the gas is going to expand. Okay, actually everything does that except water. So even if we heat up a, a metal, the metal would expand. But here we're talking about gases. So when the temperature, so when T increases, then the volume will also increase. This is the opposite of pressure and volume. On the previous slide, we saw the case where there was a relationship between pressure and volume when the temperature was constant. So we looked at if we decrease the volume, then that would cause an increase in the pressure. So the mathematical relationship that describes these two is known as Charles's law. So Charles's law can be written mathematically as V1 divided by T1 equals V2 divided by T2. And again, just on the previous slide, this is instance one. So we have some initial set of conditions. We have a gas at a certain, uh, that occupies a certain volume and is at a certain temperature. If we change the temperature, then the volume has to change. Or if we change the volume, then the temperature has to change. And all of this is assuming that the pressure is constant. So this generally works uh, like if we're doing chemistry uh, just on the tabletop where the atmospheric pressure is the same. So the twos mean that we are at instance two. Now what's different about this law and something that we have to know is that the temperature must be in Kelvin. And that's for a variety of reasons there. In fact, this relationship is what led us to the concept of absolute zero. If we cool a gas down to absolute zero, then its volume would be zero but the temperature absolutely has to be in degrees Kelvin. If the temperature is in Celsius, for example, remember 25 degrees Celsius, to convert that to Kelvin, we're going to add 273. So this would be 298 Kelvin. And again, to solve for one of the unknowns, for example, if we wanted to solve for a new volume, if we increase the temperature, We've got to be given three of these variables in order to solve for the fourth. So one way that's easier to use Charles's law is to cross multiply. So if you're not real comfortable with your algebra, remember we can cross this times this equals this times this. For example, if we take a quick look at uh, fractions that are equal, we should be comfortable with the fact that two-fourths is the same as one-half. So if we cross multiply, which we can only do if we have an equal sign, that means this, the numerator here times the opposite denominator is equal to this numerator times this denominator. So we know that one times four is equal to two times two. So that concept of cross multiplication also works here. So we could do this, V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1. And this may be a little bit easier to use than dealing with the fraction here, especially if we're solving for the denominator. So again, we have to be given three out of these four unknowns. The problem here that we want to make sure that we uh, remember is that these are happening at two different times. 
If we plug three values in and solve for an unknown, we can always check to see if our answer makes sense. Because, for example, if we had a certain gas at a specific volume and temperature, if we raise the temperature so that our new T2 is higher, then V2 has to be bigger than V1 because we know that if we increase the temperature, the volume is going to increase. So if we accidentally get things in the wrong place, a higher temperature should cause our volume to be higher. And if, we're, if we know that our temperature went up and our volume that we're solving for went down, we know that we put the temperatures in the wrong place. But again, this is a very simple gas law to use. Uh, and our answer should also make sense once we plug values in.